hello guys how you doing i'm doing great it's friday night and it has been a hard week of labor and it's behind me i went to the gym and now it's time to relax yeah and i am gonna relax by watching some films this is friday night movie marathon, marathon. Okay, so here's the thing. These are the films that I have not yet seen. I mean, there's some films that I have already seen, but these are the films that I have bought but not yet watched. So, you can see that there's some work to be done here. So what I'm gonna be doing now is select one of these randomly and then I'm gonna watch it and then I'm gonna be telling you my opinion about this film. So are you with me? Let's do it, let's do it. Okay, here's my magic fingers. I'm gonna be selecting film now. I'm gonna be closing my eyes. So here's my first film. It's a Shaw Brothers film. <laughs> oh boy, come drink with me. I will be enjoying my kung fu movie with some vegetarian pizza. So let's get this show on the road, shall we? Okay. The first film of this marathon is now over. Come drink with me. I finished watching it and I have to start this review about telling that this film and its uh, companions, Shaw Brothers, Magnificent Trio and Shaolin Handlock. As you see, these I haven't watched and these are both in the cellophane wrappings. And so was this. These things are probably the most oldest films in my to be watched list. I mean, I probably have had these like 10 years or something. I bought these, all of these Shaw Brothers that were released in Finland. I bought all of these from sale. And I think that's almost 10 years ago. I have been watching these, but for some reason these three are still left. Uh, oh, here was another one still unwatched, the water margin. So, I don't know, for some reason, I like Hong Kong cinema, I like Kung Fu cinema, and correction, this film was not a Kung Fu film, it's a Wuxia film. <laughs> that is something I learned when I was googling it. For some reason, for these Shaw Brothers films, I have a very... They, they, to be watching these, it's a tall order for me. Plot lines are very Asian and the concepts are very Asian, so for me at least they, these are hard to watch. In this film there is this criminal gang who kidnapped the son of the governor and the daughter of the governor uh, comes to rescue and she is attempting to save his brother from these criminals and she gets help from this drunken cat, <laughs> a drunken beggar who, who is actually a martial arts super expert. It could have used more action, especially in the first half of the movie. That's not being said that it was a boring film. I think, no, no. I think uh, it was more interesting plot-wise this film than these films usually are. Mainly because there's a very strong female protagonist. There was no music during the fight scenes which they make them more realistic and more interesting. And also it was bloody and even gory which was pretty surprising to me. But that is a surprise that is always fun to have. It was entertaining and more original than these things usually are, so I guess it was an okay watch. I wouldn't call it like my classic of the Asian films or the Hong Kong films, because like I said, Shaw Brothers is per perhaps not, not my cup of tea, but yes, it was entertaining enough and I am glad I watched this DVD released by Future Film. Well, it's a DVD, so the picture quality doesn't be is not breathtaking. I would give Come Drink With Me three stars. It's not my favorite martial arts film or favorite Shaw Brothers film, but nevertheless, I'm glad I finally watched this. So let's move on to the next 
film choice of this evening. Bikini business. Now get the fuck out of it. This is also a Shaw Brothers film. I'm not gonna watch another Shaw Brothers film. Even though this is a more erotic film, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna select another one. <laughs> No! Equalizer 2000! Yeah! And for the goodies, I have some chips. These are kettle cooked barbecue smoked chips. It's a post-apocalyptic film, post-nuclear war film. It is set in Alaska, hundred years after nuclear winter. And yes, there is. Alaska has been all snow has been melted off from Alaska, and it has become this kind of barren waste desert lands. And these Mac Mad Max people live there. So the story is very basic and very common for this type of film. There's two groups of different gangs and they are after oil. Of course they are after oil. I was wondering what do these people eat? I mean they live in the middle of nuclear desert wasteland and at least Richard Norton shoots at least 100 people, 200 people gets killed in this film. So what are these people have been eating for the last 100 years? Who is cultivating the earth? Who is uh, taking care of the animals? Uh, what, what, do, do they fish? Is there ocean somewhere close by? I don't know. But everybody is after the oil and then there is, of course, Eagleizer 2000. One weapon to rule them all. Yes, it's a machine gun with multiple barrels and also with multiple grenade launchers. It shoots fucking missiles. If you have seen Kirio H. Santiago's films, you, you only need to see one because I think you have seen them all. He knows where to put camera and he knows how to shoot when somebody is shooting and where something is exploding but there's really no dynamic there it's it's like watching watching a war documentary there's no passion there's no you you you, you don't care about anything you know it's so by the book and so generic and this probably goes for every Kirioho Santiago film that there is and what do you know there's a hundredth directorial entries in IMDB for this guy and it is no mistake that he has also done this Dune Warriors with David Carradine which is a post nuclear holocaust film and he made Wheels of Fire <laughs> also post apocalyptic film and also he made Striker Striker, 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 yes. But you could say that Kirio H. Santiago is a veteran when it comes making cheap action films and also post-apocalyptic nuclear war movies. Like I said, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. But I think Striker was more interesting. This is from 83, this, and this is from 87, this Equalizer. And if I remember correctly, Wheels of Fire was 85 and Dune Warriors was 91. I would certainly would want to see that Kirier would done something very special with this great looking Eagleizer 2000 gun. Make it a mystical thing, make it like some, some treasure, some like Ark of Covenant. This weapon could even possess some kind of telepathic communication with its owner. You know, I mean, make it mystical, make it do something original with it. But 
it's called Eagleizer 2000, this film, it's its name, but really the Eagleizer 2000 isn't really a big part of it. It's just some weird weapon that never ran runs out of ammunition and everybody wants it. And of course everybody also wants oil, so it could be Oil 2000 as well. I would, by the way, I would give Eagleizer 2000 three stars. Okay, so the random machine is on, baby. Random machine is on. That's the three films. No, we don't. We don't accept three films. It's so late, so we're gonna uh, la, 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 see something else. What about this? What is it? Prime Target. And to end the marathon, I have my final goodie. It's licorice. Prime target. <laughs> well, film opens with this explosive hostage scenes. The bunch of criminals have been taken over this 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 warehouse, and in comes John Bloodstone. Yes, his name is John Bloodstone. He's a renegade cop, sort of like Cobra in film Cobra. He's reluctantly called by the other police to handle this situation. And what does John Bloodstone do? Well, he takes his big goddamn gun, takes his car and drives it through the fucking wall. He also has a flamethrower with him and he tortures up this one criminal who he's already has run over. Well, <laughs> <laughs> this sort of reminds me of Action USA. In addition to the opening scene, there was some other cool scenes, like this one scene in the hotel room. What the fuck scene? Because <laughs> John Bloodstone goes to the wrong room. There's a, of course, there's a naked lady, and he fakes that they're having sex so he can surprise this one assassin. And then he fucking shoots through the wall to the other room to kill the other assassin. <laughs> I wish there was more this what the fuck kind of scene because if there would be this probably would be on par with Action USA. This is written, directed and produced by David Hevner who also plays the lead role in this. Is this a vanity project? I don't know but I've, I quickly googled this David Havner and he's made a bunch of other action films. I've never before heard of this guy, but definitely I need to check out more David, David Havner's films because it seems like he has, he's got a right attitude for type of, types of movie that I really like. Yeah, and he, he kind of reminds me a little teeny weeny of Clint Eastwood, <laughs> especially when he's walking without his shirt. Oh yeah, and Andy Robinson from Dirty Harry and Hellraiser and Cobra is here. This may not be the best B-type action movie there is, but it's, it is satisfactory, especially if you're hardline uh, action B-movie enthusiast like I am, so you probably want to check this out. You know, it's after midnight now, and this concludes my my Friday night movie marathon. What did you think of my movies? I watched this, and I was Eagleizer 2000, and also I began with Come Drink With Me. If I had to choose the best, I'd probably go for this prime target. This was very surprising to me, because I was not expecting this fun movie. So tell me in the comments what did you think of my movies and what did you think of my Friday night marathon snacks and shit. And tell me in the comments if you want me to do another marathon. If you have some suggestions, I will gladly listen to your suggestions. Yes. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And now, 
maybe it's now time for me to go to bed. Catch you the next time. See you. Bye. You best subscribe or die. You best subscribe or die after video time.